Welcome to today's class. In the today's class, we are going to discuss about the continuous uh, continuation part of the nucleophilic substitution reaction. That was the first chemical properties of halo alkene we were already discussed. We discussed with the eight different reagents how with the eight different reagents the halo alkenes is undergoing nucleophilic substitution reaction. In the today's class, we are going to discuss the mechanism, particular mechanism of a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So here for our syllabus we are having the two mechanisms that is SN1 mechanism and SN2 mechanism. So the first one I have uh, written here, look at here that SN1 mechanism of hydrolysis of tertiary butyl bromide. So here SN1 stands for substitution nucleophilic or nucleophilic substitution 1 stands for here unimolecular or first order reaction. See here. First order reaction is the term you need to remember about it. The sum of the powers of the concentration of the reactant. Sum of the powers of the concentration of the react reactant involved in the chemical reaction is called as order of the reaction. So here you will come to know what is exactly accurately order of the reaction in the chemical kinetics chapter. Just remember order means the sum of the powers of the concentrations of the reactants is called as order of the reaction. So here the sum of the powers of the concentration of the reactant in the SN1 mechanism is 1. So therefore it is a first order reaction. So for SN1 mechanism that hydrolysis of tertiary butyl bromide hydrolysis of tertiary butyl bromide is nothing but you need to take the aqueous medium reagent which is containing the nucleophile. So I have taken the tertiary butyl bromide is an one of the halo alkane where the halogen is bonded to the tertiary butyl carb uh, carbon atom which is heated with the aqueous solution of the potassium hydroxide. So you know that this OH- will attack to the tertiary carbon atom to which the halogen is bonded. The Br is replaced with the OH group and whatever the product we are getting here that is known as tertiary butyl alcohol and the byproduct is K and Br. The halide bromide anion reacts with the potassium and the byproduct is known as KBr. So here experimentally by the scientist it is proved that the order of the reaction, the order of the reaction will be calculated by rate equation. Rate means speed of the reaction or velocity of the reaction can be calculated by the concentration, the product of the concentrations of two reactant. Look at here, the speed of the reaction can be calculated by multiplying the product of the concentrations of the reactants which is involved in the chemical reaction. So here alkyl halide concentration and nucleophile OH minus of KOH concentrations both are multiplied with each other and their concentrations were raised with some power. So that power may be equals to stoichiometric coefficients of the reactant means number of moles of the reactant or may not be equal means that whatever the power value is there that is not at all theoretically calculated from the balanced chemical equation that will be calculated from the experimental data. So therefore in the tertiary butyl bromide hydrolysis by reacting with the aqueous potassium hydroxide whatever we are getting the tertiary butyl alcohol that is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. So according to this mechanism the order of the reaction means the powers of the concentration of tertiary butyl halide is 1 and the nucleophile is 0 means the speed of the reaction is only depends on the concentration of the tertiary butyl bromide but not on the concentration of the second reactant that is nucleophile. So therefore 1 plus 0, how you have taken this 1 and 0 sir, this is experimental data which has been taken out from the scientists. So there 1 plus 0 is 1, so therefore it is a unimolecular or first order reaction. Why unimolecular sir? Because this mechanism is depends on the concentration of only one product or one reactant. So therefore it is a unimolecular reaction. So this is just reaction. When tertiary butyl bromide reacts with the aqueous potassium hydroxide, it will be converted in the tertiary butyl alcohol. It is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. 
where the OH minus attached to the carbon atom and the bromide anion is departed or substituted by the OH minus. So we are getting a tertiary butyl alcohol. If you go through with its mechanism, mechanism means how the reaction has been proceeded by reacting with the uh, by reactants involving chemical reaction with each other. So in the organic chemistry, the mechanism is involved with the cleavage of the old bond and breakage of the new bond. So here, this cleavage of the old bond and breakage of the new bond may take place in a one step or a several step. So here, this is a complex reaction. Complex reactions means let you let me to explain about it. The reaction which is taking place in the multi step that is known as complex reaction. Second type of reaction is elementary reaction. The reactions whose mechanism is itself takes place in a one step is known as elementary reaction. So this SN1 mechanism where the hydrolysis of tertiary butyl bromide is taking place by the help of the potassium hydroxide in a aqueous medium, this chemical reaction is takes place in two steps. The first step is ionization of tertiary butyl bromide where the tertiary butyl bromide CX bond is broken heterolytically. Here the CBR is nothing but the CX bond which is broken heterolytically. Where these two bonding pair of the two sigma electrons of carbon and bromine is going on the head of the bromine and it will be converted in the form of bromide anion. Why it is carrying the negative charge sir? Because it is taking the extra electron of the carbon atom along with it. So therefore it will be carrying the, it will be leaving as a halide anion that is bromide anion. And whatever the carbon we are getting here that is with the positively charged. You already know that when the bond is broken, sigma bond is broken heterolytically, one element will carry the positive charge, the another element is carrying the negative charge. So the bromide anion is more electronegative in nature compared to the carbon. So therefore it has taken the two bonding pair of electrons on its head so it carrying the negative charge and the carbon will acquire a positive charge. So one of the carbon's orbital is empty that can be indicated by the positive charge. So that's why it is known as carbocation. What is the meaning of carbocation? If one of the orbital of the carbon is empty with the no electrons, if it is not having any electron then it is known as carbocation. So your carbocation is tertiary carbon, so therefore it is known as a tertiary carbocation, tertiary butyl carbocation we are getting. So you must have to write the charge on the molecule after the ionization and this procedure is taking place reversibly and very very slowly. First step is involved ionization of the CX bond of the tertiary butyl bromide to give rise to the tertiary butyl bromide cation and bromide tertiary butyl carbocation and bromide anion. So this is a slow step and whatever this carbocation is there that is sp2 hybridized and which is planar. All the methyl groups are lying on the same plane. Look at the step 2. In the step 2, the tertiary butyl carbocation which is obtained in the first step is acts as the reactant in the second step where the tertiary butyl carbocation is attacked by the second reactant that is OH minus. This OH minus is coming from the KOH, aqueous KOH, it, it behaves as the nucleophiles. This nucleophile either attacks from the front side or back side to the tertiary butyl carbocation to gives rise to tertiary butyl alcohol. So this tertiary butyl alcohol is obtained by the attack of the nucleophile to the tertiary butyl carbocation either from the front side or from the back side very fastly. So therefore the second step is the fast step. Look at here, the tertiary butyl bromide is converted in the form of tertiary butyl alcohol within two steps. How? The first step is undergoing cleavage, heterolytic cleavage of the old bond and second step is involved with the heterolytic cleavage of the, sorry, second step involved with the attack of nucleophile and formation of new bond. Cleavage of old bond, formation of new bond. Reactants and this is product, this whole procedure is taking place in a two step. This mechanism is has been asked either for 2 marks or 3 marks 
many times nearly 6 to 7 times it has been asked in the both theory examination of supplementary and as well as annual examination main annual examination so therefore it has been asked for 2 marks or 3 marks in the last part that is question number 32 either a b c any one question will be asking for 2 marks 3 marks of sn1 or sn2 so usually they will ask the mechanism if they are asking write the steps involved in the SN1 mechanism means you need to write the step and reaction everything you need to write if you are missing any charge on the carbocation or allied anion then you are not at all getting any marks specifically the carbocation must have the positive charge then only you are getting the marks so this is about the SN1 mechanism for the conversion of tertiary butyl bromide into tertiary butyl alcohol so remember here in the SN1 mechanism the order of reactivity the order of reactivity of alkyl halide is depends uh, it, it is more and more in the case of the tertiary alkyl halide because tertiary alkyl halide can form a more stable carbocation carbocation stability will be more in case of tertiary carbon than secondary than primary so because of the involvement of the tertiary carbocation we need to take out the tertiary butyl bromide or tertiary alkyl halide for the SN1 mechanism. Why once again tertiary carbocation is formed in the mechanism therefore to get the stable carbocation we must to take tertiary alkyl halide. So tertiary alkyl halide I have taken here tertiary butyl bromide which is more and more reactive and more stable carbocation it can form. Its chemistry moves towards stability. So, st stable carbocations will give a stable product. So, therefore, tertiary alkyl halide is more reactive than secondary, then primary, and then simple methyl halide. I cannot take primary or methyl and simple methyl halide because they are having a primary carbocation that will be very, very least stable. Okay. The order of reactivity of the halides such as CI. That is Ri alkyl iodide is more reactive than alkyl bromide, then alkyl chloride, and then alkyl fluoride for SN1 mechanism. Why like this, sir? Because alkyl iodides are bond length of the CX bond is more and it is very easy to break. Very easy to break, the reactivity will be more. When the cleavage of old bond is broken very quickly, then reactivity will be very, very high. So therefore, alkyl iodide for the SN1 mechanism or generally nucleophilic substitution reaction will be more reactive than bromide, than chloride, than fluoride. Okay. So here, the rate of the reaction depends on the only on the tertiary butyl bromide, but not on the nucleophile concentration. So therefore, the order of the reaction, the sum of the powers of the concentrations of alkyl halide is one, and uh, nucleophile is zero. One plus zero is one. So therefore it is a SN1 substitution nucleophilic first order reaction or substitute nucleophilic substitution unimolecular reaction. In the last class we studied about the SN1 mechanism where we have taken the tertiary butyl bromide for the nucleophilic substitution reaction, how it will be undergoing conversion to tertiary butyl alcohol in the two steps. First step was ionization of tertiary butyl bromide, second step was attack of nucleophile to form a tertiary butyl alcohol. In the today's class, we are going to have the second type of the mechanism that is SN2 mechanism of hydrolysis of methyl alcohol, methyl chloride. So here you may have, th th you may are observing that I have taken their tertiary alkyl halide. Here I am taking a just a primary methyl halide for the SN2 mechanism. Why we will discuss later. So here the example for the hydrolysis of uh, SN2 is hydrolysis of methyl chloride where the methyl chloride or chloromethane is said again it is heated with the aqueous potassium hydroxide which will be converted in the form of methanol or methyl alcohol. Here remember one thing if you calculate the speed of this 
methyl chloride conversion to the methyl alcohol by reacting with the aqueous KOH, the rate of the reaction will be depends on the concentration of the both methyl chloride and the OH, whose powers will be there, where concentration values will be uh, raised with the power 1. Why the power 1 is raised, sir? Because it is an experimental value. Whatever the power value is there, that is experimental value which has been given by the scientist. When we add these power values, then we will get the order as 2. So, therefore, the order of the reaction for the SN2 mechanism is 2. 2 stands for uh, second order or bimolecular reaction. Why bimolecular? Bi means 2. Here, the two reactants of the molecules are involved in the Concent uh, sorry, uh, involved their concentration values are involved to determine the rate or speed or velocity of this reaction. So, next let us study how this chloromethane is converted into methanol by the mechanism. So, this SN2 mechanism is a single step mechanism. It is an elementary reaction as I told you in the last class that elementary reaction means it is a such type of reaction where the chemical reaction mechanism is taking place in only one step. So this is elementary reaction where the mechanism is taking place in a one step. You can observe here. See here the chloromethane I have written as CH3. CH3 means CH, CH, CH single bond with the CCL single bond with the chlorine. So this is chloromethane open chain structure this is closed structure this open chain structure of the chloromethane carbon atom is going to be attacked by the nucleophile from the back side or rear side the OH minus of the potassium hydroxide is attacking the carbon of the chloromethane from the back side and we will get the transition state what is this transition state sir where the attack of nucleophile and departing of the halide ion both are taking place simultaneously you can observe here the ch3 is became planar here where i have i am showing here the how the oh minus is attacking attacking from the back side and cl is departing from the front side so therefore it will be forming it will be considered as a transition state once the COH bond is broken completely and it is converted in the form of methanol. It will be converted in the form of methanol. So see here, once again I am repeating, the nucleophile OH- attacks to the carbon atom from the back side and it will be forming a transition state. What is transition state sir? Transition state is the state of the chloromethane where the chloromethane Cl bond is breaking slowly because the attack is taking place from the back side through the nucleophile OH minus. This OH minus is forming slowly bond with the carbon. Partially it is indicating how the partial COH bond is formed and partially uh, it is indicated partially it is indicated how the partial CCL bond is broken. Once this CCL bond is broken completely, it will be converted in the form of chloride anion as the byproduct and we will get the methyl alcohol or methanol. So whatever this methanol configuration you are observing that is with the inversion of configuration. What is this inversion of configuration sir? Attack of nucleophile is taking place from the back side because of that all these CCH bonds are coming on the front. They are rotating from clockwise to anti-clockwise direction or we can say that they are rotating to the clockwise direction. They are coming to the front side. So here the whole configuration is changed. The change in configuration is reverse to that of the or opposite to that of the reactant configuration. The product configuration is opposite to that of the reactant configuration. So therefore, this configuration is known as inversion of configuration. So remember here, the attack of nucleophile in the SN2 mechanism can be takes place in only from the back side, not from the front side. In SN1, attack can be takes place from either side, either front or back. So, this is about the SN2 mechanism, how it is taking in a single state. So here the order of reactivity of alkyl halides. Here the methyl halide is more reactive than primary alkyl halide. Next, than 
secondary alkyl halide next is then tertiary alkyl halide so here primary alkyl halides are why more reactive than tertiary because primary alkyl halides can easily forming a transition state they can easily rotating they can easily rotating and forming inversion of configuration because of the attack of nucleophile from the back side but if you take the tertiary see here i have taken tertiary butyl bromide ch3 ch3 so this is ch3 so here the attack of nucleophile is taking place from the back side this is tertiary butyl chloride ccs3 cs3 cs3 if you attack from the back side this cloud uh, crowd or we can say that the hindrance structurally the methyl groups are hindered it will never allow the oh group to attack very quickly so the order of reactivity or the rate of the reaction will become slow when you take the tertiary alkyl halide and these bulkier groups are structurally hindered hindered means crowded they cannot able to easily move in an inverted form and they cannot able to easily form a transition state so therefore because of the steric hindrance which is occurred by the tertiary alkyl halides therefore we cannot take hence we cannot take the tertiary alkyl halides for the sn2 mechanism so let us summarize this sn1 and sn2 sn1 mechanism is conversion of tertiary butyl bromide into tertiary butyl alcohol standard example sn2 is conversion of chloromethane into methanol by using both reagents aqueous koh or naoh it is for polar solvent you can use the polar solvent for sn1 you have you can use here non polar solvent for sn2 SN1 rate of reaction will be depends on the tertiary alkyl halide more than primary, secondary and primary. Here order of the reactivity for SN2 is primary, secondary and tertiary because primary alkyl halides can easily form a transition state in SN1 and they cannot able to form a stable carbon uh, SN2, they cannot able to form a stable carbocation in SN1. And one more point it is a multi-step means two-step reaction sn2 and it is a one-step mechanism sn1 and here the sn1 stands for first order sn2 stands for second order so this is about the two mechanisms which is very very important for the pu board examination either three marks or two marks that is question number 32 from part d fifth bit